I was at the lab recently and I had an A1C test. How did I come out? And could I have done better? Check this out. Today, we're going to have a little talk about my latest A1C score. So if the only reason you clicked on this video was to hear my score, I won't make you wait long. I went to the lab a couple of weeks ago and recently received a copy of the results. In fact, before I had the copy, I talked to the nurse and the one number I had to know was my A1C score. When I asked her about it, she replied pretty nonchalantly, Oh, it's fine. It was 5.3. She had no idea just how hard I had to work for that number and how involved I've been in keeping that number low so that she could say to me, oh, it's fine. For her, that was no big deal. For me, it was a very big deal. I wanted to take a little time and talk about my own personal history with A1Cs. I've never had the really big numbers, never had an A1C in the eights or nines or tens or higher. And the reason for this is that when my metabolic system first began to break down and my blood sugar was jumping all over the place, I got absolutely fanatical in reading and researching what was going on with me and I quickly came to a solid conclusion. I needed to slash those carbs in my diet. I was incredibly motivated. I did what I needed to do and I've had pretty decent blood glucose numbers ever since. But for quite a while, I was kind of lackadaisical about it all. I read somewhere that as long as diabetics can get their A1Cs in the fives, that's great. So I was content for quite a while with A1Cs in the upper fives, around 5.8 or 5.9. Now this was pre-diabetic, but I reasoned that as long as I kept myself from going over the threshold from pre-diabetic to diabetic, I was doing good. And when I first started making videos about diabetes, that's where my A1C stood. In fact, if you watch some of my early videos, you'll probably hear me mention that I was pre-diabetic. But after I started posting my videos on YouTube, I began to hear amazing testimonies of people who had A1Cs incredibly high, far higher than I ever was, and then got them down into the low fives or sometimes into the fours. After I kept hearing these kinds of testimonies, I was amazed, I was impressed, and I was sort of ashamed. I began to be dissatisfied with my A1C in the upper fives and decided it was time I did something about it. So what did I do? Well, for one thing, I cut my carbs lower than before. Technically, I was a low carb eater before, but I was probably eating perhaps 70 grams of carbs per day, and I started moving toward the 50s and lower. Another thing I did was to start skipping breakfast, not every day, but about half the time. I would have my first meal at around 12.30 p.m. and aim at a supper at 6 p.m., although I rarely ended up having it quite that early, but almost every night I'd be done with my day's eating before 7 p.m., and I wouldn't touch another bit of food until the next day. I gave up on rice before. I had it moderately, but now I don't eat it at all except on extremely rare occasions. I gave up on breakfast cereal and replaced it with chia seed pudding. I used to have tea time and have a sugar-free Russell Stover chocolate candy and a few peanuts with my tea. And I did this every single day. But these days I may do it only once or twice a week and I normally won't be eating the Russell Stover chocolates. As a result of these changes, several things happened. My A1C dropped from the upper fives to the lower fives. My fasting glucose dropped from around the 110s to the 90s and sometimes the 80s. And without trying to, I ended up shedding about 10 pounds. In fact, I lost more weight than I really wanted to and I was looking too skinny at around 159 pounds. I began eating more and eating peanuts at some of my meals just to add some weight and I have managed to add a few pounds. Now, I need to make a couple of points about this A1C of 5.3. First, it probably would be a bit lower if I didn't do these YouTube experiments, eating high-carb foods like oatmeal with toast, cocoa puffs, and white bread. So I'm guessing if it weren't for those YouTube experiments, my 5.3 might perhaps be 5.1, but that's just a guess. Secondly, I have no doubt at all that there are people younger than me who have a far stronger metabolic system than I do 
and yet they would score higher on their A1C than what I did. And this would be due to their diet. Even though they could beat me all over the place in keeping their spikes lower in a glucose tolerance test, their constant daily gorging on sweet pastries, loads of fruit and fruit juice, potatoes, rice, ice cream, and the like, result in their blood glucose staying higher longer during their days than mine does. And as a result, they might end up with an A1C in the upper fives or the sixes. I guess in this case, it's sort of like the tortoise and the hare. I start out far weaker than perhaps they, but would end up beating them at the end due to my low-carb, low-spike diet. As I thought about this phenomenon of me making certain changes in my diet and eating style and seeing definite results, it reminded me of a thermostat. To explain, let's go downstairs and have a little thermostat chat. Welcome to the Pollock Thermostat. Thermostats have come a long way since I was a boy. Nobody ever had a digital thermostat back then. But thermostats have always worked essentially the same way. You set the temperature that you desire and your heater or air conditioner responds and creates a temperature in the house according to the number that you set. Now, with this thermostat, I simply press the plus button to make the temperature warmer or the minus button to make it cooler. If we hit plus, it goes up to 75, 76, 77, whatever I want it to be. If I want it cooler, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70. Well, I think you get the idea. Once I make a change in the temperature, our AC immediately goes to work to make the temperature line up with the number that I've set. But there is one issue that must be kept in mind about keeping the AC cooler. During these blistering Texas summer days, the cooler the temperature we keep the house, the more money we'll end up paying on our electricity bills. If we were both hot-natured and we wanted to keep the house at a cool 62 degrees, we could do it. But when our electricity bill came due, we'd have to pay for that privilege. There's definitely a price to be paid for more AC in the summer or more heat in the winter. It doesn't come free. So what does this have to do with diabetes? Let's go back to the studio and we'll talk some more. I'm convinced that for most diabetics, type 1s and type 2s, you can pretty well set your metabolic thermostat and your A1C at whatever temperature you want. For example, suppose I wasn't at all satisfied with my 5.3 A1C score. Suppose I wanted a 4.8 or 4.9 as some of my friends whom I've interviewed have achieved. I'm confident that by the grace of God and by paying the necessary price, I could get there fairly quickly. If someone said to me, I'll give you $10 million if three months from now you could have an A1C in the fours, I would take that challenge. I'd quickly cut my carbs lower than my present level, I'd start eating one meal a day, and perhaps once a week I'd do a 36-hour fast, eating nothing at all but perhaps some butter coffee. But I might not even have to go to OMAD. I might be able to get there simply by eating in a five or six hour window every day and limiting my carbs to around 20 grams or less per day. I just have to do some experimenting to see what it would take. Now, I'm no masochist and I see no reason to make any more sacrifices than necessary, so I'd probably start there with just a five or six hour window and see how things went. Some of you may be saying, well, yeah, I guess if I did all that, I could have a good A1C also. Exactly. Why don't you think about doing that under your doctor's care? But the truth is, for now, I'm satisfied with a 5.3, with my present eating plan of skipping breakfast about half the days out of my week and eating fairly low carb, but not drastically low carb. My goal in life is not to have an A1C far lower than anybody else in America, I feel like I'm doing pretty well as I am. I have no diabetic complications by the grace of God, and I enjoy my occasional breakfasts and my lunches with Benedict as we eat together and watch old sitcoms like The Andy Griffith Show, I Love Lucy, and Sanford and Son. So for now, I'm good. The day may come when I decide I want a lower A1C, and if so, I'll need to make some changes and pay the bill just like I'd have to if I wanted freezing temperatures in my house during these Texas summers. 
But with an A1C of 5.3 and fasting glucose in the 80s and 90s, no doctor in America would call me diabetic. I was so blessed to hear that very casual reply by that nurse when I asked about my A1C and she said, oh, it's fine, it's 5.3. And that, my friend, is a worthy goal for you. Some of you have had the doctor tell you that your A1C was not fine at all. In fact, it was terrible. But within a relatively short time, many of you, if not most, can have the thrill of hearing a nurse say to you about your A1C, oh, it's fine, and that's worth shouting hallelujah. I hope this was helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up so that YouTube will rank it higher in its search engine, suggest it to more people, and as a result, more diabetics will get to see it and gain hope that they can overcome. Consider subscribing to this Beat Diabetes YouTube channel and then click that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified every time we post a new video. God bless. See you again soon.